Okay, it finally happened. It's getting close to the end of 2025. And Anthropic and Claude Code finally have a version for Claude Code in the cloud. Now, this is Claude Code on the web. It just recently released. And really, honestly, maybe a little hot take here. This is the way we're going to start coding in the future. It absolutely is the way to scale yourself. I really want to dive in and tell you what's special about this. It's very similar to the other cloud coding environments right now, maybe a little bit more ergonomic in some places, but really the same value proposition exists that this absolutely is the way to scale ourselves and to decouple ourselves from the interactive mode of coding. But look, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's dive in to take a look very briefly at what they announced, what Claude Code actually is doing in the web or what that's all about. And then we'll go through a couple uses of it so that you can see a couple different patterns on how you might use it. It's really great. I cannot advise it enough. And it's already part of your subscription as long as you're paying. Let's take a look. All right, everybody maybe knows about Claude Code CLI. This is really the 150 pound gorilla, 300 pound, 600 pound gorilla, 900 pound gorilla in the corner of the room. However big the gorilla has to be to be impressive, that's how big Claude Code is. Codex is really its closest competitor from OpenAI, and they're both very, very solid, but Claude Code still wins in the ergonomic department. And with their recent 4.5 model, it really is cutting edge, really right there with Codex. However, Codex has had some things that really make it a little bit more attractive. So the next thing that Anthropic released in the Claude Code universe here was the extension. And this is the way to use Claude Code directly in a Visual Studio Code, whether it's Cursor, VSC, or Windsurf, those kinds of things. You can pull a panel out from the side and be able to use Claude Code directly while you're using one of these IDEs. That helps a ton so that you can really still see the files and have an actual IDE in front of you while you have really best-in-class kind of coding experience. Then the one thing that was remaining that they were really missing and really I missed quite a bit, and it was a reason that I was using Codex more than Claude these days, is what they just announced, which is Claude Code Web. So this is really, in all three of these cases, the same engine. It's Claude Code behind the scenes, and it really is just where it's positioned and how you're using it. That's all that really is different. The value proposition here, though, is massive. Claude Code Web gives you a website, which we'll see in just a second, that you can put in the same kind of questions that you might ask to the CLI or to the extension itself. And it allows you to just kind of put in a request, choose a repository, let it go off and cook. Okay, first looking at how we might use Claude Code, the CLI itself. Basically, it's us and Claude Code working together in an interactive way. When we talk about the cloud operation, it really is in the cloud itself is where you put the request. That system iterates with itself without you involved. And what this really obviously shows is that we can start scaling ourselves. Where we used to have to be involved and thus everything had to be synchronous, it really is a truly sustainable model that you can do across any of these platforms. It really always works from a repo first. And what that basically means, simple terms, is your code has to be in GitHub. You can come to Claude itself. So this is the Claude UI, very similar to ChatGPT, of course. And in here, you'll see a code item if you're a paying user. But once you come into this Claude code on the web experience, what you're seeing here is the set of different repos that you can get to. If you haven't yet tied anything together, there will be a disclosure here that you can make a connection to GitHub with. Once you do, you can go through and look at all of the different repos that you have in your environment and choose the ones that you're interested in, in editing on. And if I put in a request here, like explain this code base and hit send, what it's doing is it's going to go over here, create a little VM that it then checks out the code base into and then performs this. Really, all it's doing back there is running Claude code itself. So there's like an instance of Claude code that this submission was sent into. Okay, and while we're at it, let me show you that this, of course, also works on mobile. Really, any web browser you can start doing this on. The mobile application, you can do it as well. But just pulling up the mobile website for Claude will allow you to go to the same experience. And we can now see the thing that is running in the previous tab. If we go into this session, you'll see the output here that we're seeing here. So basically it's the same experience if on your mobile device, you actually want to 
create new requests in the exact same way. You just fire off request after request. And this is really that way that I was talking about we're going to be able to scale ourselves. As you're walking around with your mobile device or sitting around your house and you think, oh, you know what I would like to try? You can you really fire off, submit new requests again and again against your different applications. And what I will say, one of the fascinating things that I've done myself is really this gives me the opportunity to just play around. Sometimes I'll just fire off a very strange request, kind of saying, I don't know, try to do, I, in fact, I did one you'll see a little bit later, do something with animal emojis. Just for fun, it was really a, a silly idea, and I've decided to leave it in the production system. So really, you can start asking for odd things that maybe will generate new ideas for you. Whereas if you had to do it yourself, your time when you're synchronous that way and you're kind of the interactive mode that we were talking about, you're less likely to just take a complete time period to explore something that you think is a dead end. And this allows me to kind of explore things and really play with different ideas. If we go into this thing here, you'll notice down at the bottom, we can just have a conversation like we normally would in Claude itself or in the CLI. All of that can be done here. So it feels a little bit more like the Claude code experience that you get at your desktop, really at your fingertips, <laughs> at your fingertips, wherever you are. <laughs> All right, a few more mo uh, items about the ergonomics here. I find the layout, the information, the kind of way that Claude and Anthropic always present information to be really, frankly, far superior. And the application that we're going to be playing with is this numbers application. It's just a quick application that I put together uh, that kind of shows me the deltas between any given period of how many views or likes or something like that different videos that I have on my channel are getting. So if I reload this right now, you'll notice that there's a cute animation around each one of these orange numbers. They have a simple plus one kind of gaming animation around them. That's important, but within any given period, if you have enough, enough growth within that period, we also will show an animation with an animal. And we'll show that in a second. Right now it's not showing because I have a defect where once it shows once for a day, it doesn't show again until the next day. Seemed like a neat idea at the time, but in reality, as I move between channels or I move between periods, I still want that animation because let's be honest, animal make feel good. Okay, so that takes me back to Claude on the web. Here's the request that I put in that was basically saying the Delta animation, whenever it goes off, I want the animal celebration to be able to go off. And it of course goes through. And what you're seeing here is the output of Claude on the web while it's working. So this would be scrolling past as it's going through each one of these parts. So now that it's finished its work and it says it fixed the animal collection or the celebrations, I will say this, how it concludes is the difference. Hang on just a second. Let me show you one of the Codex con conclusions. Okay, so this is what it looks like in Codex. This was a previous PR that I put together. What you see here is the output that it gives you. And it's not bad by any stretch. It does summarize the work that it did, but you'll notice the difference between this and what Claude Code is telling us about the changes that it made. This feels a lot cleaner to me so that I can really understand what it's done. One of the things missing here is the diffs. I'm not looking at code line. And that's okay with me because what this has done is created an actual PR. Unlike what they're doing over here on Codex, they are not creating a PR and you have the opportunity to go create a PR or a branch. It leaves it here within their environment. And I really appreciate what Claude's doing. So let's talk about this branching stuff because this is where it gets a little bit complicated. It's definitely not hard. They're following standard practices, but anybody that starts thinking, okay, I'm going to start using one of these cloud editing agents. Uh, that really is the one thing you have to start learning how to deal with. It's the moment you'll need to understand what a branch is and how to deal with it in GitHub. I'm not going to go through all that. I've done that in a pre previous video to talk at kind of at length about the Git flow environment. But what I will say is it creates a branch whenever it does its work and then you can create a PR if you like. These are two separate things. That's the only complexity that I'll describe here. So if I wanna open this in CLI, you'll see it copied it to the clipboard. If I paste it here, you can see it's a clawed command. Now, what that means is it's saying you can go back down to your terminal, go into the folder where you've checked out this repo, and then paste in this command. So let's do that. 
All right, here I am in the repo. I am going to paste in our command. And you'll notice what's going on here is it's running the Claude command, which is just the program to run the Claude CLI that we've been looking at. And then it has an argument of teleport. And this is the new argument that will basically move your context forward or your conversation that you're having all the way into this session. And that's what's really cool. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, while this is checking out and kind of pulling forward, you'll see we're still on the main branch at the moment. And what it's going to do is update us to the branch that was created. I didn't do anything here. This was Claude code happening behind the scenes. And in fact, you can see that the changes were committed and pushed to the Claude add animal celebration branch. And we are now on the Claude add animal celebration branch. But more important is what showed up in our screen here. This is this conversation. So it brought the entire context down. Now this is really cool. At this point, if I continue having this conversation now and continue editing, it's as if I was up in the cloud. I have everything that it did. All of that awareness comes with it so that I don't have to kind of say, well, this branch, we just did this one thing. And you mentioned that there was a problem or there was a defect or I have to copy and paste from one to the other. They really solved this. It's a fascinating pattern that they're implementing here. I really like it. I think it's very interesting, but there's one nuance to it that I want to show you. Let's try to ask this conversation that we're in to update the readme file. Oh, stats UI. Okay, so I've run into this a couple times, and I think it's a defect that they're having right now, not temporary. I have a feeling the way this sharing of this context, the sharing of this information works, doesn't always work correctly. So I have a feeling something in this conversation in the context it pulled down actually doesn't work properly when I try to reuse it here. I don't know what it is. I don't know necessarily how to fix it. They do say use the rewind, but really the rewind feature here would allow you to kind of move through the different parts of the conversation. And since we this is just one conversation to us, there's no real parts for us to meaningfully move through or roll back to. And if we try that again, so yes, it gets Stats into this concurrency issue using the tool. I'm not really sure what that's about, but if we do this same thing, update the readme file, and I start with a clear context and tell it to update the readme file, then everything works fine. So if you get that message when you sync down the conversation, don't worry. What it's There's nothing that's actually broken about your project. It's just something that Claude Code is dealing with, with these teleported conversations or contexts that it's pulling down. I think they'll be fixing this in the near future, of course, but right now it still exhibits this issue. It works perfectly fine if you just clear your context and continue on from there, uh, but it is a little irritating. What's really important to understand here is you make changes in the cloud up here, and once you make changes in the cloud, they are automatically being stored on the repo itself as a branch. You can do anything else at that point you want. There is no more process that you have to deal with, but if you make changes down here, let's say, yes, we wanna continue this change, Okay, so now we have changes local. All I'll do is create a quick commit message and then commit that change file and then publish this same branch that we're on. So really what we've done is we made a change in the cloud. It automatically created a branch, pushed that into GitHub, even though we hadn't asked it. Now we went down onto our controls or into like our computer into our terminal environment or cursor or any other system pulled that branch. We happen to use that teleport command, but it would be perfectly fine just to pull the branch and start working, made changes, pushed back to the branch ourselves as well. Our central uh, source of truth is still GitHub, which is perfect. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. So I think this is the pattern that really unlocks everything. I would say, feel free to start making changes in the cloud. Those changes are completely okay to also update locally. It's not the complexity that you might see with something like Codex, which they created that problem themselves. Okay, but completely most important, more than anything else, of course, is does our change work? Hey, our change works. Lion celebrates. Great work. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hey, by the way, I have a lot of other videos. You should subscribe. There's only like 15% of you that subscribe. I would love to have you around here. Just saying. Okay, so one last test here is I've made changes down on our computer and we've pushed them back up to the branch. Now, I can keep going here in Claude Code in the cloud if I want. Claude Web, whatever, <laughs> sorry. Uh, but I think what the best practice would be is to tell it, please update the branch from GitHub because we think things have changed. 
Let's take a look and see if it actually first pulls the information. Really, just the README was changed there. But let's see if it pulls it and starts working. Otherwise, we're going to have some contention when we have this guy try to push his changes up after he's finished making those changes. OK, and there it is. The first thing on its list is pull latest changes from GitHub. So perfect. Congratulations, Claude Co. This is exactly what I would expect. OK, so I like these changes. Let's finish it up. It's super easy from here. So I'm going to hit the Create PR button. This takes me over to uh, GitHub itself. This repo is just for me, so I can kind of be a little bit messy there. Uh, but it also can merge in immediately. Once I merge this, I will delete the branch. And so in the end, this will now push to production for me because of the CICD that I've talked about in the past. And most of it, if not all of it, depending upon the changes that you do, were done on a web browser, maybe on a mobile device. I can do a lot of things with the right test cases on a mobile device these days. That's kind of fascinating. OK, so that's a whirlwind version of how you might use this uh, and some patterns going forward. Look, I cannot describe enough. I really believe you should dip your toe at least into trying to use some of these cloud development systems if your environment allows for it. So most projects, you can probably do a little bit of meaningful work this way. Some projects, you really are going to have to build stuff locally and do so much locally that trying to do it in the cloud could just get painful. But I really advise giving this a shot. It, it really will be the way that we code starting soon, if not next year, um, much sooner than that. I really believe that this is the answer for development at the first stages in most cases is fire off five or six big changes, let them go do their thing, deal with the merging and the approval of it after the fact. And that way we can start scaling and par parallelizing the work that we're doing and collapsing our time scales quite a bit. We do have to pay for it on the other end where you have to deal with those merges. There's still real manual work here. You will still need to evaluate it and figure out what you actually wanted from it. So this is not a the, the system is going to take over, it's going to make everything free. But it absolutely can scale you in a way that you've never seen before. So I cannot advise it enough. Great work, Anthropic. This really was a great first attempt at this, first pass at this. And hey, by the way, if anybody else is paying attention, this came out fast. This is something that I think AI helped build, not surprisingly because we are seeing turnover on these companies really releasing major things again and again very quickly, and they're in really good shape when they do. We saw one little defect where we couldn't share that session every single time, and that's it. That's the only thing I've seen so far. So great work, very exciting. Um, I hope you learned something from this. Thanks for coming along for the ride on this one, and I'll see you in the next one.